Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Chris Elliott Show. I'm Dave McCulley. We'll be joined later by Max Massengill, the linebacker who had three interceptions. He's moved up the career ladder as far as interceptions for a career here at Bethel University with six. Congratulations to he. We'll uh, look forward to hearing from Max in a few minutes. And then in the last part of our segment here in Wildcat Vision this week uh, with the Chris Elliott Show will be the head coach, Chris Elliott. I'm joined by our co-host, Zach O'Kelly. Zach, always good to have you in with us. And certainly a big win for the Wildcats. We'll talk to Max and Chris about that. But you and I were following the game as we were doing basketball at Chris Marina. Uh, but a big, big win for us on the road. And uh, momentum swing. Two or three different ways. Yeah, I know yeah. I just said swing, but uh, you know, swung well, we're, both we're, ways. We're so, both you know. country. That's okay. Uh, but uh, you know, Wildcats started out in a little bit of a hole they dug out and uh, weathered the storm, and they start, marched back to a big win. You're from Alabama, and I'm a Kentucky fan. Braden is our producer director, along with the lovely Bridget Nisher. We're all country folks here, so that's okay. Uh, but uh, yeah, came back and won 42 to 28, and we'll talk to Max about his three interceptions. But uh, the offense, Sellers and uh, Walden and others uh, did their job too, didn't they? They did. Uh, on all phases of the game, Wildcats look yeah. great this week. And we're looking forward to uh, countdown to kickoff. will be at 1 o'clock Saturday. We'll work right here from this press box. As a matter of fact, I'll be a little uh, this way. It doesn't matter. But uh, here in the press box with Craig Thomas and the Jackson Sun and all the uh, SID staff, the statisticians, Mr. Hubble and Miss Nisler in the gang. So we look forward to it. And kickoff at 1.30, Senior Day. It's always a, always a bittersweet day and a, a fun day, but a bittersweet day. And all the pregame ceremonies, seniors will be saluted before the ball game. Band, cheers, cheer and dance, and football. Yeah, it's always a bittersweet day when it's you know last home game. Yeah. You honor the seniors for all their hard work, and uh, you, you kind of look back at all the years that they've been here, all the hard work, sweat, blood, and tears that they put into it, and you know, uh, you just kind of look back and say, you know, they say, well, thanks for the memories and. Win one more for us for you, Lee. And we'll salute all those fine folks uh, in the pregame, 13 football players and two managers. Well, without further ado, let's get right to the uh, segment I always enjoy with you. Boy, you have been on a roll. What, what's your record now through, uh, what, uh, the seven weeks, eight weeks, I guess? Uh, what's your record right now? On the, uh, uh, Zach picks the winners. What's your record right now? Out of 52 games, I'm 44-8. 44 and 8. That's a lot better than Braden would do and a lot better than I would do. But uh, 44 and 8 ain't bad. Last week had a perfect week. Uh, fourth one of the season. So. Oh yeah, listen to him, <laughs> folks. Fourth one of the season. Trying to act real modest on us, but uh, let's. Um, there's some interesting games, and we're going to save the. I think the national game. We'll save it to the very end. So let's start this week. Pikeville, the Bears will travel. They'll go a little north from the eastern mountains of the Commonwealth, and they'll go up to Grayson, Kentucky, and take on the Kentucky Christian Ball Club. How do you see that? Well, that's going to be. Uh, that's going to be a. Trip for Pikeville there going up to Kentucky Christian, but uh, I think Pikeville will prevail there. What's your score? 41-24. 41-24, the Bears, the Bears to win it. Bluefield at Union, that's not far from each other. Each other. Bluefield over in the, um, the mountains, and they'll come a little bit to west and take on the Bulldogs in Barberville, Kentucky. That's going to be that's going to be a shootout. Last year, the two teams combined for <laughs> – I remember that. 124 points. You so, heard me giggle a little bit. That was, yeah. What was the finals for? 55 to uh, 60, 63 to 50 something? 68 56. Oh, my goodness. And Bluefield got the better of the Bulldogs there. So uh, I'm going to put I'm gonna put the uh, put the Rams on a little bit of upset alert here. I think the uh, the Bulldogs being at home, I think they're going to want some revenge. So, so the Bulldogs, the Bulldogs will win it. They used to have this big house out there, and they'd get the who'd let the dogs out and all those kind of things. Uh, I think both defensive coordinators last year probably had a Monday morning, Sunday morning meeting with a head coach. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, we uh, which I've got that. That's going to be a I've got it as a shootout, and it's going to be a high scoring affair. So uh, I've got it 52-45. All right. Union. All right. Union to win in another high-scoring affair. Faulkner at Cumberland, Tennessee, taking on the Bulldogs, who we just beat up in Lebanon. Uh, it's going to be a pretty good trip for Faulkner coming from Montgomery to just outside of Nashville here. Um, I've got like Faulkner in this game. Okay. Uh, 48-31. 48-31. I like your picks thus far, and I like that score, 48-31. Georgetown, this is for the Eastern Division title, basically, and the winner of this game will – be the winner of the East, and they'll go, no doubt, to the playoffs in the NEI playoffs coming up. Uh, Georgetown got off to the rocky start. They've settled the boat. Bill Cronin, one of the great coaches, not only in this league, but around the nation. He'll take his bunch into Williamsburg and take on the Patriots of the number 20 ranked Cumberland Patriots. Who do you like? That's going to be a tough test for Georgetown. Um, they start off rocky. They've righted the ship. Uh, they've put themselves in the right position to be right there in the con in the competition for the East Championship. Um, I've got a lot of Cumberlands there being at home. Uh, just the momentum they've got going. I think they'll 
They'll prevail 44-34. Two ladies, our good friends, the SIDs at both respective places. Jenny Elder, a good buddy of ours at Georgetown. And, of course, uh, I told you, Jennifer Lloyd Wakefield or Wakefield over at uh, uh, Cumberland's, and certainly they are um, – uh, Jennifer Wakefield. I get, uh, I'm getting older, folks, but anyway, it doesn't matter. But the bottom line is, two lovely gals, but uh, they had a controversial game a couple of years ago, and the clock came into play, uh, uh, officials came into play, and there's a lot of bad blood between these teams. Uh, Cumberland's at home, I favor them as well. What was your score there again? 44-34. 44-34. I don't think it'll be that high scoring. We'll wait and see, though, but I like your pick of the Cumberlands winning it. All right, a couple other games. We'll move now to just two other games left, and we'll save our game to last. Number 15, Lindsey Wilson, the Blue Raiders. We'll hear more about them from Max Massengill and Coach Elliott in a minute. But let's go to number seven, Reinhardt. They've been the jewel of the West here as of late. They go in to take on number 17, Camusville, who I think I know who you're going to pick in this one. Uh, Russell was the player of the week mm -hmm. and just a tremendous quarterback. We keep saying the best we've seen all year. Who do you like in Columbia, Kentucky with the Reinhardt Ball Club at number 17, Camusville? At Reinhardt, number seven. Well, you've got two, uh, two former offensive players of the week for the uh, NAIA going at each other this Yeah, week. you do. We're talking national players national of the week. National players yeah. of the week. And, uh, you know, Reinhardt comes in 8-0, 3-0 in the conference. Campbellsville comes in seven and two. Started out rocky even with two losses. Came back and they've won seven straight. Um, Campbellsville four and zero. Oh, they've got them edged on the in the West right now. They're leading the West, but uh, playing at Campbellsville, uh, it's gonna. I've got it as a close game. Campbellsville. I'm going to take Campbellsville 21-20. 21-20. I'm going with the uh, Tigers as well. I tell you, the big factor in this game in my mind can Ryan Hart use ball control, use their ground attack to keep Russell on the sideline and not let him get out there and light them up. If he gets out there enough, he will light them up as he does everyone else. But I think Campbellsville will win it. And finally, our game, number 15, Lindsey Wilson. The Blue Raiders got off to the great start. They were 6-0, and number one in the country. Lost two tough games to two really good opponents. And now they come into us on Senior Day. Who do you like and why? And give me a score. Well, Lindsey Wilson's got a lot to play for. Um, she's all in the hunt. They're still in the hunt. They're still even. They were number one most of the season. Two losses are dropping to number fifteen. They're still an outside shot. Um, that no matter what happens between Reinhardt and Campbellsville, that uh, they could take possibly three teams from the east as strong as it is here or from the west. Uh, if Lindsey Wilson wins out, they're, they'll climb the rankings a little bit more. It'll put them in a better position to make the uh, make the final playoffs. So. Um, I've got to give Lindsey Wilson a slight edge here. Lindsey Wilson, what's your they've score? They've got more to play for. What's your score? 38-35. 38-35 would be a great one. I, I tend, I want to say the Cats in my heart, my mind says that Lindsey Wilson will win the big ball game. Wildcats, I know many of you watch it. I know many of you get to your dorm rooms or your homes and you watch this all together as a group. Prove us wrong. Go Cats. I'm going to say Lindsey Wilson as well, but, boy, it could be a great one. And 15 seniors, 13 plus two managers will be saluted in pregame ceremonies. When we come back, Max Massingill will join us. And Jennifer, uh, forgive me for butchering your name, but one last comment. Bridget, who did she pick? She oh, yeah, uh, Bridget Nosler, our producer director, she made her picks this week as well on the six games. And Bridget has picked all the winners. So no matter who wins or loses, she's picked them to win. Thank you, Bridget, for that astute uh, acknowledgement there and analysis. That's going to wrap it up for this segment. When we come back, Max is up with us next here on the Chris L.A. Show. Stay with us. Well, welcome back, everybody, to Wildcat Vision. I'm Dave McCulley, Zach O'Kelly. We enjoyed, uh, always, with Zach, the first presentation of our program. And, of course, Zach with his picks again. The guy's been almost, well, I wouldn't say letter perfect, but he's been awfully good. Still to join us in Wildcat Vision this week is Coach Chris Elliott. We're joined, though, by Max Massengill. You know him as number 40. He's been a tremendous player in two years for us here at Bethel University. And, Max, welcome to Wildcat Vision, buddy. Thank you. All right, great effort last week. Of course, we've already talked about the Cats uh, with their big comeback win down 14 to nothing and came back and won 40. 
42 to 28 up at Lebanon. A pretty good football team that we beat. We'll talk to Max about the well, the sort of the gut work of the game and his uh, his performance in just a minute. Coach Yellett will join us, but uh, I'll tell you, let's set the stage a little bit. With his three interceptions, he now has six career interceptions, and he has moved up all the way up to fifth on the all-time uh, career list here. And Max, I'm not sure if you are aware of that or not, but uh, when you look at some of the great names of the years past here at Bethel, that's uh, you're strutting some pretty good high cotton. Congratulations on a great game last week. Thank you very much. Uh, let's talk about the interceptions. Your your first interception, and you returned it for the touchdown, gave us a two-touchdown cushion. That was big, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Um, they'd run that concept a couple times earlier in the game, and uh, opposite receiver was running a zero route, and then the running back was coming out of the backfield, and Vic would pick him up, and then I picked up a zero route and hit him, the quarterback a little bit behind him, and he tried, got a hand on it, and the ball bounced up in the air. I was lucky to break on it, and then it was clear pass to the end zone. Defense played well. We give up a, a long touchdown, or excuse me, a long return on the kickoff, and uh, certainly they go right in and score. Then they go up 14 to nothing. And you guys probably thought, oh, my goodness, you're on the road. It's tough. But, boy, credit you, credit the defense, and credit the offense. We came back, put 42 on the board, and won by 14. Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, it was tough. We were kind of definitely some of the wind was taken out of our sails to begin with. But, you know, we, uh, we recovered, and we were able to kind of get a foot in the game. And once we did that, we were – started to make some plays and, and get some good field position and started to win that battle. And uh, then the offense picked it up and we were able to get a, get a lead and kept going from there. So. We mentioned the six interceptions. Remind you, too, this young man is only a sophomore. He's got some more football to play not only this year but in the years to come. And let's talk about the second and third interceptions. Um, well, the first one was the one uh, that Elmore tipped and I caught. And mm-hmm. um, the second one was the pick six. And then the third one was the second to last drive of the game. Um, and the two inside receivers both ran a uh, post, and I was just playing the, the hole. And uh, luckily, uh, I think the quarterback's vision was blocking, and he literally threw it right to me. And I was thinking, just get down, let's get our offense the ball, and, and let's get out of here and get home. Absolutely. It was the second pick, and I stand to be corrected. Something else I do want to publicly acknowledge today. This young man should have been the Mid-South Conference linebacker or the defensive player of the week, and that's not because of the league, not because of Chris Wells, not because of the other folks voting. It's because of this guy right here. Uh, I've got to talk to the SID here pretty soon, but uh, it was a snafu on our part, and certainly I do apologize to Max. If you'd like to read an update on Max, too, go to BethelAthletics.com. We posted an article, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I put that up, and talked about the fact, of, talked about the game, Coach Elliott had some comments about Max and also uh, talked about the career, moving up that career ladder as well. Uh, big win. I mean, that's a pretty good football team. I know they're not at the top of the uh, Western Division, Cumberland University, but they're always salty. They're always uh, ready to play. They're well coached, and that's a good win, road win for us. Yeah, they're one of our bigger rivals, um, sure. obviously being in-state, and we want to win that just for the recruiting battle and whatnot, but uh, just for also for the pride. You know, a lot of guys from Nashville on the team, and, and they want to go home and, and rep- represent. So, uh, you know, we were fortunate to, to get a win, and uh, you know I know everyone was very pleased, but uh, we're looking forward to this week and hopefully get another one and continue in uh, Lindsey Wilson's uh, losing streak. So I know your mom and dad watch. I know they listen down in, uh, in Florida, but uh, talk about how you got to Bethel and your experience here thus far. Well, my head coach at uh, my high school was Mike Allstott, and he played uh, with Coach Fells at Purdue. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was the connection, and Coach Fells recruited me, uh, brought me up here, and uh, you know, I did a regular just recruiting visit and met with Vic and uh, DeBonis and Will Nix and just a regular group of the guys. And uh, you know, I just kind of fell in love with it. It's small. Sure. It's a lot different than back home. But um, you know, it has a lot of nice things, and the people here are just phenomenal and just drew me in, and I just wanted to play ball somewhere, and uh, this was a great fit for me. And you know, I've been thankful ever since. I guess some of the D-line and some of the secondary folks might get a little mad at us because it's almost been the linebacker show here for the last few weeks. We had Vic and Anthony. and Talk about the, your fellow linebackers. We've had a good core of linebackers. You go back through the years. I've been here now six years after all, this, all those years at Lambeth. But uh, linebackers have always been some of my favorite because you get a chance to – I mean – we talked to Vic and Anthony about this, and especially Vic with Anthony being out. But we talked about the D-line. Their job is to stand people up and allow you guys to make a lot of tackles. And that's exactly the scheme of things. That's what we do. Right. Absolutely. Um, you know, my freshman year, I was able and uh, fortunate enough to play behind uh, Dustin Kincaid and Tyler Murray, both Florida boys. Sure. Um, Murray, the all-time leading tackler. Yep. Here. And then uh, you had DeBonis, who, uh, you know, wasn't able to get a lot of playing time unfortunately due to his injury but you know he offers so much to me uh, just from a leadership and just a role model and um, you know when I'm not on the football field those guys I'm hanging out with them 24-7 and then you got Vic Krzyzewski you know he's uh, like a brother and you know I mean they, they teach me so much and you know our D-line credit to them you know Jerry Bradford and TT and and all those boys and Colin O'Brien and Terrell and, and Glenn they they do a heck of a job you know they work hard every day um, and our safeties you know they come down and they hit hard too sometimes sure. and 
you know, we have to keep doing that and we just keep doing our jobs and, you know, we're going to be pretty successful here. Yeah, TT was on with us earlier this year as well, Terrence Thomas. Talk about the group uh, as a whole, uh, and you mentioned some of the guys there, but talk about how a defense has to bond together. You guys have to know, and it's still a young, I think people forget sometimes, Bethel is still a young football team in a lot of spots, playing some freshmen, playing some sophomores, and this is one of them right here that's had a great career thus far, but talk about the bond and how together you guys have to be defensively. No, and that's absolutely true. You know, from the moment we come here with camp, you know, we get, you know, anywhere from 80 to 100 new freshmen. So uh, you're immediately looking to bond, and you've got that core nucleus of older guys who, you know, sure. you kind of you, you gather around and you grow from there. Um, but we've had a really good leadership, you know, uh, with Brenton Davis also. Um, you know, we really just kind of, at practice, we just feed off each other's energy. And, you know, it's not easy. It's always coming to work, especially we had 5 a.m. practice this morning. So you just – you gotta you gotta get through it, but you also want to grow through it. You know, Coach Fels talks about all the time how we're growing yeah. through it. We're not just trying to get through it; we're trying to to better ourselves. And, and with that bond, we're able to push each other and and you know get on each other in time. So when need be, you know, when our secondary struggling or our D line or linebackers, you know, you know, we call each other out. And we I mean that's who we are. We gotta make each other better. So that game is uh, was an important game because it was our last one. The next game is the biggest one because it's the next one. And Absolutely. Lindsey Wilson comes to town. Although they've dropped two in a row after being number one in the nation, they're six and two. They still have a lot to play for. Playoffs are still in their picture. Uh, talk about this Lindsey Wilson team and certainly a very talented offensive group. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, they have a lot of athletes, um, you know, starting from their, their kick returner, I believe is number one in the nation, and then they have some really good wide receivers and a quarterback who knows the system really well. Um, you know, there's no secret that they're going to try to throw the ball. Um, sure. We know that. Um, you know, we're, we're pretty solid up front. Uh, we believe that. Um, but we got to be able to do our jobs, and I believe if we communicate and uh, you know we talk it out, and, and we're just vocal on the field, that we'll be very successful this Saturday. Yeah, and certainly uh, they do like to throw the ball a lot. Lindsey Wilson, a relatively new program, and they've done a great job up there. But uh, I thought Jacob Russell was the best quarterback we've seen this year with Campbellsville. This kid's not bad that uh, they have with the Blue Raiders either. No, no, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Jacob Russell, he's a pretty phenomenal quarterback, and we saw that firsthand. But uh, you know this kid coming in with Lindsey Wilson, um, you know he's pretty good. Uh, he really is. Um, He's been caught. Up, he's been brought up in the system. Uh, I believe he's a red, sh red shirt sophomore, um, and he knows the system really well. And uh, he relies on his big athletes to go make plays for him too, which is you know under just it's phenomenal when you have guys like that. Um, so you know we believe he's going to be very dangerous. But like I said, I, I think we'll be able to hold our own. Max Massagill, our special player of the week this week, not only here at Bethel, but on Wildcat Vision as well. A couple of notes. Your mom and dad listen, and I know they watch a lot, and uh, I want to say hello to them. And then the other factor is those glasses. They, I, I said them before, our producer director is the lovely Bridget Neisler as well, and Braden Annie's in with us this week. And, of course, you just heard from Zach O'Kelly and saw the guru of pick em, the pick em part of our show. But uh, those glasses are real. Yeah. I said he looked like a professor, uh, a studious professor here, but uh, the glasses are for real, aren't they? They are indeed. <laughs> Give us the keys for a big one over Lindsey Wilson. Um, like I said, uh, if we just communicate defensively and offensively, if we're able to sustain drives and uh, obviously finish them with points, uh, I think we'll be very successful. Um, I want to win the special teams battle this week. Uh, that hasn't been our strongest point this year. Normally, we're a very good special teams team. Yeah. Uh, so I believe if we come out this week and we make a few big plays and give ourselves good field possession, offensively and defensively, that will be very successful and hopefully to get the win. And we say so long to some of your buddies, uh, some of the seniors. Yeah. Uh, we have 13 seniors and two senior managers that have been integral parts of this program as well. So it's a bittersweet day for, for all all of us, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, like I said, I can't, can't thank the seniors enough for what they've done yeah. offensively and defensively. Um, you know, they're just role models and brothers to me. And, uh, you know, this, this experience wouldn't be what it is for me without them. So I'm very thankful for them and I'm hoping to send them out on the, the highest note possible. Congratulations on moving those, uh, that number up on those career interceptions. And I said during the story, I told some people, I said, I dropped the ball. He didn't. But uh, congratulations on a great week. And let's go get them and keep moving up that ladder. And go Cats. All right. Thank you, sir. Max Massengill, our special guest this week on Wildcat Vision. When we come back, we'll talk to his boss. We'll talk to the head mentor, Chris Elliott. Get his thoughts on the big win at Cumberland. And also set the stage for the Lindsey Wilson game. Coming up, we'll have it here on Wildcat Vision. 1 o'clock will be our airtime with a countdown to a kickoff. And then at 1.30, the kickoff on Senior Day against the Blue Raiders of Lindsey Wilson. We're back with Coach Elliott right after this. Stay with us on Wildcat Vision.
Well, we hope you enjoyed the interview with Max Massigal. I know I did, and Coach, I did apologize to Max again. I said that uh, Max didn't drop the ball. The SID, I got to talk to the SID here. We got to get in touch with that guy. That was a bad snafu, but he should have been the conference player of the week. But again, go to BethelAthletics.com and you'll read a nice article that we posted about Max, and certainly he's a big part of the win up at Cumberland University. Coach, congratulations on a nice road win, Thank and you. you beat a pretty good football team. I mean, they're always salty. They're well coached, and they're one of our rivals too. Well, I mean, I guess that would be our rivalry game yeah. now. I mean, they're the closest team to us in conference. Mm-hmm. And, of course, you know, they're in-state. And, you know, a lot of those guys either played with one another in high school or against one another in mm-hmm. high school. So there's a lot of uh, familiarity there, I guess, with that team. So it's nice to, you know, be able to go down there and get a win. I was uh, prepping for basketball in that press row, and I, we fall down 7 nothing. We fall down 14 nothing. I went, Dad, gummit, we're off to a bad start. And lo and behold, we came right back right before the half. Boy, those scores right before the half were big, weren't they? Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's not good to get down 14 yeah. nothing. Um, but, you know, we got down and we, you know, we were, we didn't go backwards. We responded and, you know, kept, you know, kept chipping away at it, so to speak. And we're able to, you know, get to a point where we made some plays and, you know, got back in the game. And then, you know, once we got things going in our direction, then we just kept it moving that way. We talked to Max a lot about the defense, so I'm going to sort of accentuate the offensive side with you. Uh, Quincy Walden, a big game. Uh, Sellers, a big game, uh, throwing and passing. But Quincy had a big game, didn't he? Yeah, I mean, you know, he continues to, to do it really in any way that we ask him to. I mean, although he didn't return as many kicks the other day, mm-hmm. um, but, you know, running the ball, catching the ball. I mean, when we do ask him to go back and, and return kicks for us, I mean, anything we're asking him to do, he's doing a really good job at it so far. He certainly is. A nice article about Quincy Walden. I, I like the caption on the story. I haven't read it, all of it yet, but I've been told by several people it's really a nice piece written by Craig Thomas, our good buddy, who will probably be in this very press box with us Saturday, but it's, instead of where, where's Waldo, it's where's Walden, I think was the caption on it. So I thought that was pretty neat, but uh, Quincy really has developed. And, and the offense really answered the bell the other day when you need them to didn't it yeah i mean that's you know that's what you got to do i uh, you know is respond and you know like i said things didn't start out the way we wanted it to but i mean that's okay sure uh you know just because it's 14 nothing in the first quarter doesn't mean the game's over right. i mean there's still plenty of football left to be played and you know we did a good job of bouncing back from that and you know the offense you know the offense did enough to, to put ourselves in position and get points and of course you know when you take the ball from the other team five times and we were plus five in the turnover right. margin and our offense you know well I mean we took care of the ball and we're smart with it and you know held on to it I mean you're going to have opportunities to do the types of things that we did if you have the ball in your hand and then if you're taking it away from the other team that puts you in an even better position and going back to last year here I think it was six turnovers that's 11 turnovers in the last two times we played them that we've been to the plus side let's talk about Max a little bit uh, his second uh, interception and I was confused at the in the segment I interviewed him because I looked at my notes coming over and just went brain dead for a moment which I'm known to do uh, but uh, Max Max's second interception was this interception that put us up by the two score, the two touchdowns, and that was huge, wasn't it, to go up two touchdowns? Yeah, I mean, you know, for I think second week in a row now, our defense has, has yeah. scored, and you know, we had eleven, I think eleven the week before, and had a touchdown the other day. So, you know, anytime you can get, you know, whether it's you know defense or special teams over and above your offense score, and that's even better for you. All the years I've done ball games, uh, with the, either with Wildcat Vision or the radio side, it's always been those bus rides home after a win. Boy, they are! You can turn the TV on, you can relax, you can watch other games, and of course, coaches are still reliving the game. I'm sure in a lot of ways, but uh, uh, that was a shorter one of the shorter trips back. But that had to be a nice bus ride back to McKenzie. Oh, it is. You know, we went to you know went and got dinner after the game. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's. You know, to to see the guys have smiles on their faces and to be happy after putting all the work in, sure. you know, that they did in the afternoon, it's always, you know, it's always much better. And then, of course, the bus ride home is always happier as well. Now, Coach Elliott is not one of those guys either. He's not one of those coaches that if they lose, it's fast food. If you win, it's a buffet. We normally, we normally as in the famous words of the past AD here, Glenn Hayes, be safe and eat well. <laughs> <laughs> well I'd, li- I'd like to think that we eat well. Our yeah, guys exactly. don't, uh, don't go hungry too no. much. So. And, and those guys can put the food away. Uh, big win. Uh, puts it four and five. A chance to get to 500. A chance to have a winning record. Two big teams standing our way. Forget Ryan Hart. We'll talk about him next week. This Lindsey Wilson Blue Raider team, awfully good team, despite the fact they've lost two games. But they lost them to really two really great teams, too. Well, I mean, you know, they were six and zero, and then they lost to Campbell's and number one. Reinhardt. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's not like they've lost to, 
you know, a, a team that's not having some success. So, oh, Kelly um, University yeah. or something, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Four sacks. <laughs> we'll schedule uh, them next year, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know, so I mean, they're going to be coming in sure. here. You know, of course, you know, losing the last two, they're going to be wanting to get back on track and you know, doing the things that because I mean, you know, I'm sure they're still working to you know have an opportunity to get an at-large bid in the playoffs. And I mean, so they're still working. To you know, they have you know postseason aspirations. Uh, I, w- I would think so. You know, it's going to be up to us to, to come out and you know play really well. I mean, and we've been playing a lot better the last few weeks. And I mean, I think you know if we can continue to do that and, and, and you know improve on the things we need to improve on, I think you know we got as good a shot as any to you know be successful. What makes them impressive offensively? I know they like to throw the ball a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you look at their overall stats, it's fairly balanced. But yeah. they like to throw the they ball like more, you know. Yeah. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of the carries run wise were probably earlier, you know, and they were winning some games bigger. But uh, you know, their quarterback is only a sophomore. I right. mean, this is his first year starting. Um, you know, the quarterback they had last year and the good year that they had, he was a senior. But you know, he's only a sophomore, but he's a 60 percent passer. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and does a pretty good job taking care of the ball, and they like to spread it around. Um, but you know, they do it a little bit different too. They use a lot of tight ends, you know, in, in different formations sure. and things like that. But uh, you know, so, so you know, it poses a challenge. You know, for our defense, you know, they are a pass-heavy team. You know, they have more success in the air. But, uh, you know, I like where our defense is at right now. I mean, I really think... Really developed, haven't they? Yeah, and progressed. I mean, you know, I don't know statistically where last week ranked, but, you know, sitting and watching the film with Coach Fells Sunday night, I mean, it's probably the best all-around game we've played in terms of everybody being where they're supposed to be and playing off of one another and those kind of things. So, and with a younger group that we had in some spots right. to see... That progress right. happening and, and having you know that type of a game last week just goes to show that you know we are getting things ironed out and figured out as we go. So I mean, you know, even though the, the record hasn't progressed the way we had hoped it would, at least we're seeing the results and seeing the improvement on the field where it needs to be. Sure, and, and I think we forget sometimes that I brought this up with Max. We're still pretty young. I mean, look at Max; he's just a sophomore, you know. And, and then Burns gets his chance to play one of the best. I, you go on and on and on in the D line. He mentioned the D line and. Uh, Brenton, the, some of the seniors and those kind of things. Uh, let's talk about Senior Day before we talk about uh, Lindsey Wilson's uh, defensive scheme of things. Uh, it's a bittersweet day. As we say so long to 15, uh, 13 players and two managers, it's always a bittersweet day, isn't it? It is, you know, and, and you sit down and, you know, I was reading through the bios today, and a lot of those guys have been here five years, right. you know, and, and it doesn't seem like it. Yeah. But, I mean, you know how that goes. Sure. I mean, every day goes by faster than the one before. But, uh, you know, extremely proud of the group as a whole. Um, with everything that they've done, everything that they've accomplished. Um, you know, one of the great things is seeing kids come in here and watching them grow and mature, you know, academically, athletically, personally, all, all those kind of things. And, you know, our goal was always to help them become better people when they leave than they were when they got here. Not to say that they come here in a bad place, but you understand what I'm saying. Sure. We're, you know, we're trying to prepare them for that next huge step in their life, which is a really big one. So, you know, I mean, overall, I can say that those guys have done a great job during their time here. And, you know, you hate to see them go, but when you know the things that they're getting ready to head into and bigger and better things, you know, you're happy for that, though. And managers work so hard in every sport here. And, uh, of course, I've done, I guess, 24, 25 years now at the collegiate level. I've always had great respect uh, because I feel like we're support people, too, and what we do on the media side. But I look at the managers. They work so hard. And managers are a lot like media folks. When the game ends, everyone else goes home. Managers and media people, our day sort of just begins in a way. I mean, we have a lot of things to do. And I know Jasmine, and uh, I wanted to call them out personally. Jasmine and Dustin have been uh, great people for you, haven't they? Yeah, definitely. And I mean, to have a group of people like that, you know, I mean, you know, Jasmine and Dustin are seniors, and we've got, you know, a, a really good group of people that will still be coming back. To have people that you can give tasks to and they work hard and, too and they? they do i mean you know they show up you know hours before the game they get everything situated for the visiting teams and they help the visiting team get their stuff to the bench and you know making sure they have everything they need and then doing everything that we need them to do um the fact that you can have a group of people that can take care of all those things allows us as coaches to do the things that we need to right. do because otherwise if you don't have somebody to do it you know we're doing those type of sure. things so um, you know we've been fortunate over the years to always have great kids in those positions and you know give them jobs and trust and know that it's going to be done and not have to worry about it you know not being done correctly a little bit like the SID office I was just reflecting last Saturday night we had one of those eight to 
about nine or ten days, and uh, there were kids here when I got here, there were kids here when I left. Uh, Zach was still here to midnight, I think, but those people, they're invaluable behind the scenes uh, to, to your, your group and to my group as well. Defensively, Lindsey Wilson, what can we expect out of the Blue Raiders there? I mean, they're, they're a 3 4 team, um, and that's pretty much what they do. I mean, you know, maybe some goal line short yardage, they'll do something a little bit different. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward what you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they'll do a little bit of blitzing and those kind of things out of it, but, you know, it's just. You know, a matter. I mean, we're going to know where they're going to be. You know, it's not right. going to be one of those games where you know we got to wait until the end of the first quarter to be comfortable with what you know what fronts they're going to show right. us and all that. I mean, we know right. what we're going to get. Sure. So, you know, in terms of preparation, that makes it a lot easier. Right. There's not a lot of guesswork going in. You don't have to say, well, if we do this, they may do, you know do three different things. So, um, so that makes it a lot easier. And of course, our defense is a base three four, so we spend a lot of time sure. working against that type of a defense so you know we've been able to kind of expand you know some of the things that that we normally like to do um, because of playing that type of defense but uh, you know just be a matter of us taking care of the things that we need to take care of I mean you know they got a solid defense they're good you know they're good up front they got solid linebackers I mean so it's not gonna be easy but you know we just need to do our thing and we should be okay very good and uh, I know that uh, you look at all the things that uh, Intel I know they have a great returner uh, mm-hmm. I think one of the best in the nation. So special teams, is, as Max brought up, uh, uh, special teams is a big factor in the game as well as always. Yeah, I mean, they always are. And, I mean, when you can, you know, when you can make the plays, you know, and we want to make them as opposed, you know, because, I mean, of course, Cumberland the other day started off with the big kickoff return, you know, and scored right away. I mean, that's that's – those are the things that cannot happen. But, you know, we were able to bounce back and, you know, made some plays even in special sure. teams the other day that made, you know, made a difference in the game. But anytime we can, you know, use those opportunities to do something big in our favor, that's that's a very good thing. Coach Chris Elliott on the Chris Elliott Show. Folks uh, always uh, enjoy having him in with us and talk about the preceding game and the upcoming game. And, of course, we'll have it again at Wildcat Vision here, and we'll have the countdown to kickoff at 1 o'clock and the kick at 1.30. Uh, before I let you go, I know it's been a tough year for the Steelers, but uh, you're finding Irish in the top six. I know he he's so busy. I know you probably don't even, haven't followed all you the way. You know more about but, what's uh, going on But with I did watch with I interest, did. and I thought of you and Lindsay the other night when I saw they're in the top six. Of course, O'Kelly's in, uh, in Bridges, Alabama, Crimson Tide, they're already there in the top four. And Braden, he's a Tennessee fan. Uh, they're, they're, they're still struggling. And of course, I'm a Kentucky fan. We're, we're waiting for basketball, which is upon us anyway. But, uh, but anyway, um, Congratulations to Irish. They're right there knocking on the door anyway, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I said, you probably know more. I don't even know. I mean, I know they're doing well. I have no idea what Pittsburgh's yeah, record is, yeah. but uh, I don't have time to check that stuff out right now. And so. I'm not going to pick on Braden because they're probably going to uh, run the table now because of the teams they play. And Tennessee will have the bragging rights on, on the wild. And, and I think, has Tennessee and, and Kentucky played yet? I'm not sure if we played in football yet. Okay. All right. Uh, Coach, uh, always a pleasure. Good luck to you. Let's go get the Blue Raiders. That'd be a great uh, – way to send the seniors out here at home and then Reinhardt we'll talk about them next week but uh, um, I think that uh, this team if we play well and do the things as you said being in the right places we got a shot at this powerful Lindsay Winslow team definitely all right and again one o'clock will be our time for a countdown to kickoff that's going to wrap it for, uh, up for us my thanks to Braden my thanks to Bridget as always and Zach O'Kelly hope you enjoyed his picks and we were graced with the presence of number 40 Max Massingill earlier until next week with the Chris Elliott show I'm Diamond Dave McCulley so long everybody